Hello, my name is Brother Sean, and I'm a member of the Teo community of Interfaith Franciscans, a cyber online community of men and women who embrace the monastic life from their own home. But the purpose of this heart reflection is to focus on the art of communication. And here I would like to quote Thich Nhat Hanh, who has written an amazing book called The Art of Communication or Communicating. Nothing can survive without food. Everything we consume acts either to heal us or to poison us. We tend to think of nourishment only as we take in through our mouths. But what we consume with our eyes, our ears, and our senses and those we participate in are also food. Are we consuming and creating the kind of food that is healthy for us and helps us grow? When we say something that nourishes us and uplifts the people around us, we are feeling love and compassion. When we speak in act in a way that causes tension and anger, we are nourishing violence and suffering. We often ingest toxic communication from those around us and from what we watch and read. As are we ingesting things that grow our understanding and compassion? If so, that's good food. Often we ingest communication that makes us feel really bad or insecure about ourselves or judgmental and superior to others. We can think about our communication that makes us feel bad or insecure in terms of nourishment and especially our compassion. The internet is an item of consumption, full of nutrients that are both healing and toxic. It's so easy to ingest a lot in just a few minutes. This doesn't mean you shouldn't use the internet, but you should be conscious of what you are reading and watching. When you work with your computer for three or four hours, you are totally lost. It's like eating French fries. You shouldn't eat French fries all day and you shouldn't be on the computer all day. A few French fries, a few hours are probably all most of us need. What you read and write can help you heal so be thoughtful about what you consume. When you write in an email or in a letter that is full of understanding and compassion, you are nourishing yourself during the time you write that letter. Even if it's just a short note, everything you're writing down can nourish you and the person to whom you are writing. So how can you tell what commu communication is healthy and what is toxic? The energy of mindfulness is necessary and an essential ingredient in healthy communication. Mindful requires letting go of judgment and returning to an awareness of the breath and the body and bringing your full attention to what is in you and around you. This helps you notice whether the thought you just produced is healthy or unhealthy, compassionate or unkind. Conversation is a source of nourishment. We all get lonely and want to talk to someone 
but when you have conversation with another person, what that person says may be full of toxins, like hate, anger and frustration. When you listen to what others say, you're communicating those toxins. You're bringing toxins into your consciousness and your body. That's why mindfulness of speaking and mindfulness of listening are very important in the spiritual journey. Toxic conversation can be difficult to avoid, especially at work. If it is going on around you, be aware. You need to have enough mindful awareness not to absorb these kinds of suffering. You have to protect yourself with the energy of compassion so that when you listen, instead of consuming toxins, you're actively producing more compassion in yourself. And when you listen in this way, compassion protects you and the other person suffers less. Let us just be and reflect on how we live out our day and making a decision that's right for our heart and our spiritual paths. That's why I took the vow of enclosure as an enclosed lay monastic Franciscan monk who embraces all faiths. I'm not running away. In fact, I'm running towards my higher self. I'm running towards my God and by closing the gate and shutting the door on the world, I'm not being immature I'm not closing down, I'm just being mindful that the world thrives on crises. The media is negative energy and everything is rooted in fear. Many of us suffer because of difficult communication. We feel misunderstood, especially by those we love. In a relationship, we are nourishment for each other. So we have to select the kind of food we offer the other person. And that is why I feel so privileged and humbled to be a member of an online community of brothers and sisters of different faiths and lifestyle choices. Because there is no judgment. There's no condemnation only love. And God is love, whether you're a Buddhist, a Hindu, a Sikh, an atheist, a pagan or whatever. For the first time in my life, I am honoring my heart. And I have no one to please but God. And for too many years, I allowed insecurity, low self-worth, low self-esteem, destroy my karma my interior blessing. And when I said to people, oh, I love you, I didn't really mean it because I didn't love myself. So if one doesn't love oneself, then when we say to someone, I love you, who's the hypocrite? So you and I have to take responsibility today for our spiritual paths. And the way to do it is get on your knees and ask the angelic realm, the messengers of God to come to you, to guide you, to support you, to touch you, to prepare the way for you. There's a downside to having free will because the messengers of God and our spiritual teachers cannot interfere or intervene in our life without our permission. But the plus side, once we invite, invoke and ask the archangels, angels, spiritual teachers, ascended masters, even God himself, guess what? They come. But we live in an age where everything has to be done yesterday. 
We are fools to ourself. Our impatience has been our undoing. We have lost the art of blessing. We've even lost the art of listening and stillness. And proof of that is when you walk into the supermarket. They cater for the busy mom. They cater for those on the ladder of success, or is it, where all the fast foods are beautifully presented with additives and colorings. And a lot of that has done a lot of people harm. Because back in the 70s when I was nursing as a student nurse and a monk, I never came across as many cancers as I see today. So we are ingesting food that is bad for us because of the harmful toxins, chemicals and additives. And we can do something about it. We can stop. We can begin to prepare our food and bless it. But that's too much difficulty for many people, too much effort. It's another stress factor. How sad. And some are the same with God when they ask God for help. They expect it in their time to their mindset. In other words, they're controlling a loving God. They're manipulating God for their own selfish end. Instead of inviting God to speak to them and to listen to the heart. Oh no, too busy. I can't sit. You pray for me. I have so many people who ask me to pray for them. And when I ask them, do you pray? Far too busy. Isn't that sad? That the God who created them, you and me as well, that we've no time for our spirit room only time for the mind room and the body room and we have to remind ourselves we are three rooms in our spiritual being mind body spirit and we live to a 24-hour clock and we know if there's imbalance there's no harmony or divine connectedness but the moment we honor who we are and take responsibility for who we are and for what we've done and say sorry. It allows us to embrace a divine appointment. It allows us to be in a place where God can touch us and set us free. Remember, we live in a beautiful world it's fast becoming toxic, where love is controlling, not selfless or unconditional. And religious orders and monasteries, synagogues and shuls and temples are not exempt. Because we're human, we make mistakes, but do we learn from our mistakes? Let us enjoy this day. Let us come back to our inner divinity, to that child of love. And let us distance ourselves from those who seek to destroy us, for those who belittle us and put us down. You may be in a loveless relationship. It's time to take responsibility and wipe the dust from your feet and depart. Come back to your true self and to nourish your mind, your body and spirit with the love of a Creator, Father, Mother, God who truly loves you and is waiting for you to ask. Namaste.